Hello everyone, my name is Frances Green, I'm the Founder and Managing Director of Green and Pleasant Events. I founded the agency two years ago in 2014. We're a small agency of five people and uh, we specialise in conferences, incentives um, and live events. Uh, hello everyone, I'm Luke Flett, I'm with Ashfield Meetings and Events, Head of Global Marketing. Um, in terms of uh, kind of size of Ashfield, we're over 300 employees. Um, we've got global operations, um, and we manage about 2,000 events a year. Um, so we're representing obviously the large agency size of the, the discussions today. Thank you. So let's begin with the obvious thing: perception as like an outsider. It's easy to think that a big agency might be impersonal, but that a small agency can't cope with kind of size and scope. Probably neither is true, but that's the perception that it's very easy for many people to have. Francis, how do you feel that people perceive you as an agency? Is that something that you then have to fight against, or what, what's the perception out there to begin with? It is a challenge, and I think that for us, the perception is that because we're a small agency, that we can't do big things, big things or that we don't have big clients, and in fact, the opposite is true. And um, it all depends really on, on client need. And we do work with some major brands, some global brands, and are more than well equipped to deal with the challenges that, uh, and, and able to deliver for those clients. So I think that that is a, a false perception. Um, when it comes to you know, stakeholder perception, that's another question entirely. Um, and I think that as a small agency, we are not bound by um, you know, some, of the, some of the rules that stakeholders would put in place. So we're, we're flexible and we're, we're able to deal with the challenges that some big clients are our way, certainly. What about you, Nate? Um, I think for us, um, perception can, can be kind of the counter of that. And uh, most people think we won't do smaller events or that we couldn't service a, a small event or a smaller client and uh, that the size and nature of our business is kind of scaled up to large corporates and, and bigger SMMP programs. Uh, but it's not in the events industry. Um, you're as good as your last event and your, your service levels have to be paramount and we have to deliver that through each and every one of our clients irrespective of size group. Um, I think the other perception issue um, for us is, is, is a positive, it's around our brand recognition and the kind of length of time that we've been in business. Uh, everyone's familiar with our brand and it's easier for us to start conversations um, through that perception. Um, but that can have um, counter sides as well. People might perceive us to be in a particular service area, so they might think we're just a logistics provider when in actual fact we're full service and it, uh, it's hard to kind of change uh, people's perceptions sometimes with that. So. And stakeholder perception? Um, yeah, in, in, in internally or kind of... Yes, yeah. yeah. Well, so in, internally, the kind of perception of, of working for um, a larger agency, I suppose, is the opportunities that that, that provides. Um, and uh, it, it's a very kind of positive environment and being part of not only a meetings and events that has kind of 300 employees, we're part of a wider division that provides all kinds of opportunities. Um, for, for staff and that, that perception for them uh, is that those opportunities are available. But in a smaller agency it might well be that the opportunities are more personal because they might come to you directly and sort of say, can you help me out with this or I'm quite interested in that. Do you find that when it comes to kind of training it's, it's easy to manage? Mm. People that you're working, that are working um, for you? Yes, it is much, I, I think it is much easier because, I, because I'm involved with the company. <coughs> company. So um, when it comes to client perception, I, you know, I'm the face of the company and the client is dealing with me personally on a day-to-day -day basis and that, that's just the reality of, of running a small agency. Um, so yes, and there is naturally going to be um, the opportunity to interface with me and, and you know, I'm an extension of or well, the brand is just an extension of me, if you like. So, and that just can't happen with a larger agency. You know, by its very nature, you know, the MD isn't or tends not to be close to the clients themselves. Whereas I, I know our clients personally, 
Um, I see them on a weekly basis. I know what their likes and dislikes are, and and they choose to work with us because of that. Because of that. If we're looking at sort of actually training, though, is it harder as a small co company to cover the very areas of expertise that you need to have? Well, in our company, each individual has to become not only an not only an expert at their own jobs, but they need to be able to adapt quickly depending on a, a different client's needs because we are a, we are only five people. So those five people, those five individuals will learn um, very quickly uh, how different clients like to work because each person invariably will be involved across all of the projects. So you're looking for sort of a multi-skilled person? Um, so you'll, you'll, you'll recruit somebody who is an, an expert in their own area but just by being part of a small agency, they will quickly have to diversify their skills depending on the client needs. So we're constantly responding to the client need rather than um, an individual being siloed in their position and in their function. So we're always outwardly looking um, rather than taking work that um, plays to the individual's strengths, if that makes sense. But presumably you have the advantage of big training <coughs> programs that you can kind of throw money at or sort of organise sort of structurally. Um, we do and that's very important to the organisation in terms of the learning and development side of that and making sure that the individuals within the business see career progression and see those opportunities for them. Um, but I think the same principles apply really um, because our business is structured in terms of smaller business units within the larger infra infrastructure. Um, and in that same kind of way, we're responding to client needs and the, the training is specific to those clients in those different business units. Uh, but then there's a wider program which allows people to kind of move between them and see that progression. Is it harder to encourage flexibility though? Um, it's, it can be in certain teams because obviously um, we're, we're dealing with uh, 60, 70 clients and they've all got different requirements. And if you're working in, in one team, you're very, that requirement for that client might be very different from some of our other events and clients. Um, but we always encourage that people um, uh, challenge themselves and put themselves forward to be able to learn those skills so that they have adaptability and flexibility. Uh, the job that they're doing at the moment for that client might not be the job that they're doing in six months or a year's time uh, because we need people that uh, are willing to be flexible and, and happy to learn new skills. Well, that's the thing, we're talking at the moment sort of size, small versus a large, sort of practicalities, structure and everything like that. But the, the key issue which someone's actually highlighted here is it, it's not so much about size at all. It's to do with values and chemistry between you uh, and the clients and the agencies. And presumably you both want that regardless of size, but do you approach it differently? I mean, you said obviously you'll probably end up speaking to you directly on the phone because you are the face of the company. So obviously you still want to have chemistry and, and a relationship with your clients, but how does that vary depending on the fact that you are so, so, so different size-wise? Well, for us, I, I, I think it is true. I think um, in some respects, uh, size is irrespective when it comes to that personal relationship. Um, and you people by people, and it's building that trust uh, and that confidence in terms of that client relationship. Um, and I also think it's a, a cultural aspect and it's as you get bigger it's harder to maintain that culture and you have to do a lot as the agency grows in size um, to manage that and ensure that the culture of the agency remains the same because the clients that you're working with in the current time have bought into that culture and bought into those people but also um, for uh, the future clients and prospects uh, that's what they're buying into as well so it's important to maintain that. And I would imagine in, in a, a smaller agency, that culture is happening every day and uh, you're living and breathing that brand and it's, it's easier to kind of instill those values and those ethos into, into the staff. So. Definitely. So when in a smaller agency, everybody has to um, buy into the culture, uh, the culture. There's a lot of camaraderie. And as a group, we tend to be more willing and open to taking risks because we are a close-knit team. And I think as a bigger agency, often you've got more to lose because you've got a reputation that's much bigger um, than the individuals, and you've got more to more to lose as a, as a as a company. So you may find yourselves less open to risk take, to take, taking because um, you know, you have um, 
a legacy to uphold and you have a set of deliver deliverables that you know are achievable. So you may tend to stick to what you know more. Whereas when you're in a smaller knit team, you may be open to taking risks because you know, when you've been around for just two years, you're, you're, you're maybe doing things for the first time as a group of individuals and that's perceived as normal. And those risks are, are how you take those next steps and get Yeah, yeah that's how you grow. grow and learn together as a... And I, and I think um, in a PLC environment, uh, a lot of PLCs are kind of adverse to risk. Um, but in our business, we've, uh, we started a kind of sister brand, uh, which is called Spark Thinking, which allows us to be a bit more challenging, be a bit risky in terms of how we're proposing solutions to clients, but still have the infrastructure of Asheville behind us. So it's kind of the, the best of both worlds. We can have an agile team that, that are going out there and being disruptive in how we're talking about uh, uh, the brand proposition, but also um, in how we're challenging clients on what the future holds for them, what changes around the corner and how we can deliver against that. And, and people, they, they may not have bought into Ashfield for that, but if we can offer them as complementary services, um, we, we can align it and we can add real value by combining the two together. I was going to say, because that's, that's, that's the suggestion that you may alienate some clients that you have if you were to be, be, bring your kind of spark thinking within your brand, so you're purposely running it sort of parallel, but, but letting the two feed off each other. Yes, it is very complementary, <laughs> um, but also in terms of the service offers, um, clients have bought into different services. We might have some that just use us for logistics, some that just use us for venue finding, some that use us for full service, uh, and it's the same respect there as well, um, and we have to kind of manage that, and we do it in those business units that we talked about, so those those smaller pockets that, that are kind of running their own P&Ls and, and like their own small agencies really within the larger infrastructure that has the central resource, has the support, has the kind of connected excellence across the business.